So for today's topic, we're going to talk about common ways that disputes can arise in a probate case and when those disputes can occur. The way litigation happens in probate is actually very different than the way it happens in other types of courts or in other types of cases. So we're going to talk about it today. I think it's very interesting. My name is Eric Roll. I'm the founder and CEO of Georgia Probate Law Group. We're a law firm focused exclusively on helping families after they've experienced the death of a loved one. We do a lot of estate and trust litigation and we encounter these kind of issues all the time. We also help families in uncontested situations where the primary focus is on ensuring that the estate is settled correctly and everything's done properly. So let's dive in. So we've done a couple of other videos where we've talked about the three phases of an estate that every estate will go through where you, you have someone appointed to represent the estate, you then do the work of settling the estate, and finally you close the estate through distribution and discharge. We've also talked in a different video about the five parts of a dispute. You have pleadings where you make allegations, you have discovery where you do an investigation, motions where you ask the court to do something, the final trial or hearing of the matter, and then potentially an appeal. So what we're gonna talk about today is how do these two things interact and what are some of the most common disputes? So let's start with the appointment phase and we'll start with an example. So in the appointment phase, a common example of a dispute is a will is filed with the court and another party comes forward and says, I don't think that that will is valid. I think it's a fraud. And so we're asking the court to declare that that will is invalid. So those are the allegations or those are the pleadings that are made and that starts us on a dispute. So we go from the appointment phase to the first part of a dispute, pleadings. Then we'll proceed forward to discovery where we'll look for evidence to support the allegations that are made. There may be some motions made in the case and finally the case will proceed to court uh, to a trial or a hearing on that particular issue of whether or not the will is valid. Once that trial or hearing occurs, the court will have rendered its decision and we will come back over here to where we left. So you'll notice that this entire dispute process happened inside of the first phase of an estate and we really didn't move very far. So you can think of a dispute that occurs in an estate as a detour where we kind of detour off and we got to go through this process and then come back. Well, now that we know whether or not the will is valid, we either have an executor appointed if that will is valid or if it's invalid, we may have an administrator appointed right here. That allows us to continue forward with settling the estate in the estate process. So the estate process has essentially been paused while the dispute is going on. So that's an example in the appointment phase. In the administration phase, one example would be, I don't think what the executor is doing is right. I think that they're not following the duties that they have to the estate. And so judge, I would like an accounting of everything in the estate because I don't even know what's going on. And I would also like for you to remove that executor. And so what would happen here is very similar. Those are the allegations made, and we would go up here to the pleadings part of a dispute, and that would set off discovery motions. We'd go to a trial or a hearing. The court would render its decision, and the court would either say, yes, I agree, I think this executor should be removed, or no, I don't agree, I'm gonna give this executor another chance, and you know, executor, you need to follow these guidelines. Now, while this is going on in discovery, we could get a lot of information about the estate through that process. So if there's, if there are things, you know, questions about what has occurred or not occurred, discovery can be utilized for that. Then we move to the final phase and a common dispute that can come up in the final phase is a dispute over the amount of a distribution or inheritance that's going to be sent out um, where, they're where the person is questioning expenditures or questioning debts that were paid, or it could really be about anything that's happened. Because remember, one of the things the executor is looking for in this final phase is they would like to have that liability shield put in place to protect themselves in the future. Well, in order to get that liability shield, our executor has to file a discharge petition, and when that petition is filed, 
all parties are given an opportunity to object to it if they have not consented to it. So let's say we have an heir of the estate that objects to our discharge petition and they say, the executor hasn't done everything correctly. I think mistakes were made. And so that launches us back to the pleadings phase with whatever allegations, whatever those mistakes are that are alleged. We then do discovery. We have an investigation on that. There may be motions. We go to a trial or a hearing on the matter. And at that point, the court is going to decide either I'm going to go ahead and grant the discharge petition because I don't think there were any mistakes made or the mistakes made weren't material or the court's going to say, I think there were mistakes made. The executor needs to fix these things uh, before that discharge is going to be granted or going to be available or the court may remove the executor. You know, the court has broad discretion in these cases. So this is how these two parts interact. And these are you know, some examples of common disputes in an estate. Um, I appreciate you watching. I think personally, I think this is an interesting topic. It's one that comes up all the time in probate cases, especially when there's a, a dispute or litigation of any type. And if you, of course, if you have any questions about your own situation, please feel free to give our office a call. We'd love to help you. Thank you very much.